And finally, I would like to welcome Sue Penicu, MLC, to the stage to address the Australian Greens Victoria Arts Platform. Thank you, Jeremy. I think I have to lower the microphone after speaking after Ted, who's I think, quite a bit taller than I am. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for inviting me to speak uh, at the conference today. Um, and uh, wish the AICV a happy 21st birthday. Uh, also, I'd like to join in acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the East Kulin Nation, and to pay um, my respects to their elders past and present. And also in saying that, um, to uh, acknowledge that uh, there needs to be more support and ongoing support for our Indigenous artists um, across the country and in Victoria and to make sure that they are always consulted and included in um, what happens with their art um, now and into the future. Uh, I'd also like to um, say that I've, I've managed to, to get along to two of the Fringe Festival events and uh, um, I take uh, Ted's point that we're uh, now performing at the Fringe Festival here today. Uh, but uh, I'd also uh, point out that the last week of the Fringe Festival um, coincides with the final um, sitting of the Victorian Parliament. And so I, I, um, I, I suggest to uh, Peter Batchelor and, and whoever's the Premier <laughs> next year that uh, they don't uh, schedule Parliament in the same week as the Fringe Festival <laughs> so that we can, we can get along to more events. We just sell tickets. <laughs> we can um, because it is, uh, it's one of my favourite times in Melbourne, um, and I think it pretty well has happened every year that we don't get along to many things because Parliament's sitting. So that's one of the woes of being a parliamentarian. Um, I also noticed that um, the um, street art um, exhibitions uh, opened yesterday, and I'll be hoping to get along to that because um, I am quite a fan of street art, uh, which is not always popular among some, some uh, other members of the Parliament. But uh, I think... Um, well, uh, our art comes from the grassroots, um, and it always has. That's always been the case. Uh, we, we have, um, obviously, uh, a great arts culture and history in the city of, in, in Victoria, and, um, and in particular in Melbourne. And it is true that art is, uh, the Victoria is the arts capital of Australia, and Melbourne in particular. Um, is the arts, is the music capital of Australia. But we are also known as the sports capital of Australia and it's funny that we've got uh, now this obsession with, uh, the, um, with the grand final following the, the draw, uh, which I, I know hasn't happened very often. Uh, I'm not much of a sports follower, but I do get excited when St Kilda's in the uh, grand final. Otherwise, I don't think it's all that very exciting. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's very exciting that there was a draw. But I don't think, and I said this um, at a... Um, at a rally for the, for the Victorian College of the Arts. There's, there's no reason why we can't be the sports capital and the arts capital. Uh, they're both good for the soul. Sport um, is good to watch and to participate in and it's, it's good for your health. And so, so are the arts. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't acknowledge before my parliamentary colleagues um, and Jeremy and um, our speaker, Brooke Andrew, and also uh, my other parliamentary colleague, Heidi Victoria, who's in the audience and also our Greens candidate for the seat of, straight seat of Melbourne, Brian Walters, who is also in the audience. I also see some members of the arts community that I know well in the audience as well, and thank you for all for being here. Uh, I hope to briefly outline the Greens policy and approach to the arts, and also I, I am open to feedback on that and ideas from this conference, and I hope to uh, be able to stay behind to see the next part, which is um, the panel discussion and uh, pick up some ideas from that. And we're always open to uh, feedback, feedback on our policies, which are up on our websites, uh, our website, both our federal website and our state website. Uh, so there, are fed, there is a federal and a state uh, policy. And we also have um, 19 local councillors who, um, who have also taken an interest in the arts at the local level. And I know our... Um, our Melbourne City Councillor Cathy Oak was very instrumental in development of the music policy at the City of Melbourne. Uh, as Ted was saying, um, the arts are important to us and uh, a life without art is really a life not worth um, thinking about. My own personal favourites are uh, music, possibly followed by, uh, followed by the visual arts and then possibly theatre. But, but whatever it is, we all, all love to go and consume, if I can use that word, the arts. 
However, um, most artists are not able to support themselves through their art alone. Um, most have day jobs, um, or if not, they live very sparingly. In, in fact, um, the, um, a recent survey found that uh, some of them live you know, under $10,000 per year um, income, which is, which is um, an issue which uh, at, at a federal level we, we have um, put up an initiative to try to, um, to address. And so it, uh, it wasn't true, in fact, what uh, Peter said, that there, there was silence in the federal election over, the, over arts. In fact, the Greens had a lot to say about arts. And uh, our, uh, our art, federal arts spokesp spokesperson, Christine Milne, made quite a, a, a number of important announcements, which I will go to in a moment. Um, but I believe that the government does need to support the arts. Um, Peter mentioned the uh, arts budget, Victorian arts budget, of $449 million. Uh, that is out of a state budget of just under $45 billion. Um, and my maths isn't, pretty, isn't all that good, but I think that's uh, less than 1% of the state budget goes to the arts, if that's, uh, if that's what uh, the figure is. Um, and certainly that's the figure that uh, Minister Batchelor presented at the Public Accounts and Estimates Committee as the uh, budget for um, Victorian arts this year. So I think even if we doubled that figure, uh, to something like $900 million, that's still less than a billion dollars uh, and still a very small uh, proportion of the uh, state budget compared to the um, benefit that all Victorians and all artists get from being involved in the arts. And the economic benefit of the arts to Victoria is, is a lot more than $449 million per year. So in terms of looking at uh, the arts as an investment rather than a cost, I think we could we could look at increasing the arts budget. Uh, I'm not suggesting that that's uh, Green's policy to, to double it to 900, but I'm just, I'm just suggesting that, I'm just suggesting that <laughs> if, if we think about it that way, it's a framework in which to think, uh, that, that is still not, a, it's still not a great amount of money. And um, I, I, took up, I took on Brooke's point that um, Melbourne um, or Victoria is, is not, uh, not seen as a, um, a great art centre like Los, uh, like Los Angeles or like Paris, for example. However, we are a city, uh, we are a state of five million people and, and a huge city. Melbourne is a big city internationally. It does have, I think, quite a good reputation around the world and there is no reason why we can't aspire to be Paris or Los Angeles in our Victorian Melbourneian way. And there are many artists that, that uh, go overseas uh, from Victoria, from all around Australia, but we're talking about Victoria here, and who are very renowned and respected for their originality. So I think that's what we should be aspiring to, and that's why we do need the government to support arts uh, at arm's length, perhaps. But um, the Greens see that uh, we need to support the arts like we need to support schools, hospitals, water, and dare I say, public transport. Um, because substantial government support is required to maintain a thriving arts community because it can't, it can't maintain itself without public support. Public support is needed to uh, maintain the arts across all types of arts. And so we do need to uh, make sure that uh, there aren't cracks that, that people are falling through and that certain parts of the arts are, are not being supported. Uh, and I'd also say, while it's important to support our flagship arts institu institutions, which I think um, Peter and, and uh, Ted spoke a lot about, public support, support of, of the arts at the grassroots is the key to the long-term health of our arts and our culture. Um, I mean, the blockbusters are great, and uh, I've been to, to see many of them, and, and, uh, and I've enjoyed them. And in fact, I used to go with my father, who um, passed away a couple of years ago. He was a member of the NGV, as, as am I. And uh, uh, it was one of our, our special things to do together, was to go to see um, not just the blockbusters, but you know, my father loved to go to the NGV just to see the, the NGV collection. So it was one of our ways to spend time together was to go there. But I also go to visit a lot of um, the regional galleries and smaller galleries. One of my favourite is Bright Space in St Kilda. Uh, and to see the, the um, art from the local artists that just live around that area and, um, and uh, pick up a couple of their paintings. 
so these are the sorts of things we need to do. We need to um, look at, make sure that the funding is always um, emphasising the grassroots and the people uh, who, who are up and coming and new artists, um, with, be they musicians, be they performers, be they visual artists, and be they people who are, um, are working in this industry, not necessarily as performers or visual artists. Um, of course, this is all happening, um, but, but we support its ongoing enhancement. Um, and I think that we do need to, to um, put more resources uh, at federal and state level into supporting the arts. 